What's up, everybody? Big Herc, fresh out. You tune into another edition of our interviews, and I have a hell of a story right now sitting next to me, um, John Paul. And uh, this is going to blow your socks off, man. This guy has lived a hell of a life, and we were fortunate enough to link up with him to get his story. So uh, make sure you guys stay tuned and subscribe to the channel. Uh, John Paul, man, uh, nice to meet you. And uh, tell the people a little bit about yourself, man, where you, where you grew up, where you're from, man, and, um, you know, how you got into the life of crime. Well, I grew up in the San Fernando Valley on Orient Street, one of the worst streets out there, Columbus, Orient. And, and uh, man, I, I don't know, I just, one of my girlfriends knew some guy that just got out of prison, and I hooked up with him, and he was tied in with the Italian mafia back then. And what time frame was this? This is 1978, right when I turned 18. Oh, wow, wow. And uh, so I met him, and I'm, I'm, I was, like, delivering dope for him. You know, I was driving a Lincoln Continental Mark IV, and it was, like, the baddest one in San Fernando Valley. I was cruising Van Nuys in a, uh, El Dorado with T-tops on it. Back, oh, you know, shit, you know, yeah. Right when T-tops first came out. Yeah, yeah. You know, and I was living in an apartment. It was like eight hundred and fifty dollars a month back then. Back then, that was damn. That would have been like Castle to be like apartment. Right now. Yeah, Castle via apartments had a loft in it. You know, it was like eighteen years old. You know, and wow. I just, you know, and then you know, I was driving around. I would deliver, and one time I went down and picked up uh, ten pounds in Hollywood, Kona Gold. And on the way back, I was in a rental car, and I got pulled over in the canyon. And I had ten pounds in the trunk, and they just gave me a, a, a ticket for a. Uh, Speeding, you know. Oh, shit. But, you know, so I, I, I was, you know, learning the game from them. And then like a year later, I just, you know, they're trying to tell me what girls I could bring home. One of my old little ladies said I couldn't bring her around. And I said, all right, and I left. You know, I said, forget this, a year mm -hmm. later. So I just started selling dope. And it seemed like every connection I ever met in my whole life always fronted me, wanted to front me dope, front me dope. And then like six months later, they were buying dope from me, like Quaalu, you know, you know, they were getting stuff from me. Mm -hmm. and that's how it was my whole life, man. Just connections with, you know, I sold Quaalu, so they were no more. Mm -hmm. I started selling cocaine when it was r real cocaine back in the, it was 1,800 ounce. Back, back when in, people were snorting it. Yeah, that, b b before crack. It okay. became 500 ounces. It was 18, okay. it was a rich man's high. It was, you know, I used, I was using... I didn't, when I was dealing with them, I didn't use, but then I found out cocaine, what it was like, and, and I was partying, you know, and, and I think I started selling dope because I was making 500 a week doing asphalt construction, and I'd go party on coke one night, and I'd be, I'd be broke, you know, and I was making 500 a week, like when I was 19, 18 years old, mm -hmm. and it would be gone Friday night, so then I said, fuck, you know, so I decided I'm going to sell it so I can use it. Mm -hmm. So that's what I did. That's why I sold dope my whole life because I used dope. Mm. You know, I, I was back in the days, cocaine, I, I OD'd like three times from cocaine, the real cocaine back in the days. Oh shit, was that strong, huh? Well, I was slamming it. Oh, you know, yeah, it yeah. The, I wanted the high, you know, yeah. but, you know, so my favorite drug was PCP. I sold that for years, you know what I mean, 20 years. And what, for those who don't know PCP, what the hell is PCP? Because people don't talk about it nowadays. They used to say, it used to be <clears throat> an inkwit, uh, elephant tranquilizer. Okay. You know, that's when it was, back in the days it was good. So that's the stuff that had people just blown out of their mind. Butt naked, like, they call it butt, butt naked. Oh, butt naked. Where they say they could break the handcuffs. Off yeah, the, you know, super strength. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that was one of my favorite drugs for 20 years, and then I, the cocaine, I was hooked on that crack cocaine for 20 years, Primo's and all that. Oh, man. But the reason I, you know, I always sold the drug that was in demand. Mm -hmm. Like in uh, 19, I, Quaaludes, so they were no more. I had a connection back in the, the early 80s. It was called Crazy Joe, big old brother, half Cherokee, half black. And he would, he just loved me. He would, uh, every day he would give me a pharmaceutical jars of pills, Quaaludes, Preludes, Black Beauties, Reds, and Rainbows, and a jar, PCP, for 1100 uh, 1100 bucks, $2 a jar, and the, the shirt, you know, so it would be 1100 so I would owe them 1100 bucks a day. 
So I would take that PCP $100 bottle and I would get 40 Sherman cigarettes, put them in a bottle and I'd pour it on there and just put the lid in and they would all turn like wet and I'd throw it in the freezer and they would, back then you had to, it would freeze, you had to crystallize. Mm -hmm. So every day I made $800 just off of that $100. So I would sell Damn. a few little pills and I would just stock up the pills, you know, no big deal. It was, that's how my life was. Every time I made a connection, they just fronted me, fronted me, fronted me. Night, you know, in 70, 83, 84, what I was doing there is Woodley Park. It used to be a drive drug through store. It was on I on LA and everything. And for two years, I would go there every day, take a hundred dimes of weed and just sell. Maybe I'd sell out in two, three, four or five hours, but I'd make a, you know, I'd sell it every day as much weed I have. And there would be 20, 30 people doing that. That was during the 84 Olympics when they had them here oh, in LA. Shit. And they just let, they let it go. They, it was just weed, drive through drugstore. It was on I on LA. Wow. So I'm people just openly were just out there doing their thing. Yeah, just selling weed. But then they started, you know, people started getting robbed and stabbed and shot. And then they started raiding the park. You know, mm. just, you know how it is. They always ruin a good thing. Mm -hmm. You know, and then um, I ended up moving to Riverside for a while. I was on the run. I got busted some youngster at the Woodley Park. You know, we were weighing the shit up. And I let him use my scale. We, we got busted coming out the hotel with the the scale, they were looking at some other hotel and the cops seen it and they, they guys, and it was his dope, but he wouldn't take the cop. You know, me, my whole life, if it's mine, I'm taking it. Mm -hmm. So anyway, I ended up taking a joint suspended from that. And uh, ended up going to see the, the probation lady and she's like, you know, I'm like, you know, you know, pulling the wool over eyes and she goes, oh, you know what, let me see your arms. And I just saw her and I had the big old abscess from uh, doing the dope, yeah. you know, back then, and uh, she just like, violent. she was ready to violate. I was gonna go do my time, so I, I was too young. I'm too young to go to prison, so I uh, changed my name to John. My name's John Paul Acres. I changed it to John Paul Jones. I moved to Riverside County. Back then, it was easy. I, my birthday five twenty seven sixty. I changed it to sixty four, and I started all over out there. Mm. You know, I just started working again, and then I started selling dope out there. You know, and Paris, California, it's nothing. You ever been out? It's like country. Yeah. It's... And I'm thinking, man, then I found out that Paris, California is on the top 10 list of FBI for drugs. Oh, shit. Because they make the PCP out there in, mm -hmm. the, in the orange. Because the chemical smell, you can just let it. With yeah, they come from L.A. and yeah. cook their dope out there. The, the, coke, the, um, the uh, speed, they cook speed out there. And I didn't know that. And I lived out there for like eight nine years, you know, to burn that name out. But I was a big weed guy. I, you know, everybody was selling cr the this, this crack and, the, you know, a lot of brothers out there. Mm -hmm. And they're, you know, they try to tell me, hey, he's making too much money. I go, I'm selling weed, man. You guys are, you know, but they try to, well, watch your back. And I go, whatever, I'm not, you know, this is what I know how to do. I sell dope, mm -hmm. you know. I don't never pay tax or nothing, have never, bro. But I was out there in Paris, California, and I was making good money. They were getting, they were hating on me, you know what I mean? But they told me to watch my back, and I just, you know, at, smoking my Sherm out there, I, that's what I love, that Sherm. I used to get 20, uh, 16 ounce bottle for like a $50 a rock. Mm. You know, the guy would cook it. And, uh, you know, I was out there, and I, I fought, a, uh, I ended up getting arrested out there before I ever been to prison. And, uh, it was something that I didn't do, and they were trying to give me, they said 11 counts. They were trying to give me 120 years. Damn. It was for some <clears throat> rape cases. I'm never, you know, I don't rape women. I, you know, I'm, and I said, hey, I didn't, I'm innocent. It will take this 11 year deal. I go, I'm taking no deal. I didn't do this. And I go, God knows the truth, my Lord. He goes, I don't want to hear that. I go, whatever. So I fought that case for, for eight months in Riverside County. And I just prayed every day that one person would believe me in this jury trial. Me and a young, a young brother, mm -hmm. you know, I prayed every day. I had a boss and I was, I was an asphalt construction. I was a foreman. Mm. And all the time these girls said this happened, I was at work. And my boss was like, yeah, I'll be there. I'll tell them, you know, because they said it happened at Miss. And I worked in dark every night getting these big jobs ready. And the day, you know, for my boss to come and testify, he, he couldn't make it. So anyway, I got on the stand. I told them that they didn't want me to get on the stand. I go, 
I ain't got nothing to hide. I'm, you know, and you know, I, you know, the DA can mm. did you say? I go, no, I didn't say that. You said that. You know, I just told yeah. like, well, I didn't have nothing to hide. I didn't do it. That was your life on the line. Uh, 120 <clears throat> years. Yeah. And, and he told me take an 11 year deal. You only do six years. I go, I didn't do it. I'm not taking no deal. You know, especially going to prison for that. Yeah. Oh, hell no. But I fought it. I prayed every day to God that one person would believe me. One person. And that's what happened, that, you know, we were in the trial for uh, 30 days, and then it, they, they were, the jury was out for four days, and then it came back, and they had a hung jury. One lady believed us. Wow. Exactly what I prayed for. I'm like, Phew. So then they're taking us to trial again. And we're in Riverside County. It's a 98 conviction rate. <laughs> so we're in there, you know, and I'm fighting this case under that fake name. They never found out. And... Uh, so I go on the trial for one, you know, start my second trial. It's a month later. Now I'm praying to God, please, Lord God, just want, just make them tell the truth. Come into their hearts and make them tell the truth. Three days into my second trial, the DA comes in. Did you hear what happened? I go, I don't even want to look at her. She's, you know, saying, you know, for, she's trying to hang me for something I didn't do. I go, what? She goes, the people found God last night and said they can't lie no more. Wow. I go, I told you. Wow, but they were going to pressure you into taking 11 years. Yeah, they were. Well, I wasn't going to take 11. I was going to do 120 because I went to jury trial. Yeah, yeah, no, but that's what they do. And people like, you're so scared to death. Oh, yeah, yeah. Take the deal. And most people do because wow. they're scared. But, you know, I, you know, like today, if, you know, when I go to trial, if I'm guilty, I take, you know, let's yeah. do it. What deal you got? What kind of deal you got, you know? That's crazy, man. You know, so I, I fought that. You know, I got out. And so they said, I go, let me out right now. They, well, we're going to keep you in one more week and s send a, the people to a psychiatrist. One week later, we walked out, me and my buddy. That, you know, no deal, no nothing. Wow. And I, I, you know, I thought about suing and all that, but I, just, I was just happy to be free. And then I was in there, I promised God a lot of things. Get me out of this, I'll do this and this. And as soon as I got out, I started selling dope again. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And so I had Paris, and then, you know, I finally ruined my fake name there. But anyway, like I said, my name's John Paul Akers, and out there I got married under that fake name. <laughs> oh, and shit. had two kids. <laughs> under the fake name. <laughs> two kids under the fake name. So oh. now I, I really want to change my name to John Paul Jones because... <sighs> I have two sons that have that name. Oh, shit. And to me, I just think it's the right thing to do. Yeah. So I want, I'm working on that, just okay. changing my name. My dad, you know, he was never there for me. He's dead, you know. So, just, you know, I don't think it's fair that they have that name and I don't have it, their dad. So yeah. I'm thinking, you know, that's thinking it's the right thing to do. I think that's what I'm going to do. So anyway, Riverside, I was balling out there, balling. And I kept on getting in trouble. And I finally wore out that name. So I came back out here. And I, you know, I'm selling dope again, and I get busted, you know, with the, I had the gun in the trunk and all this, and they busted me, and so I went to court, you know, I was on the run for 10 years for that joint suspended, so they're going to give me the, I think it was three years, and I go, all right, so I, I was in 92, I did my first term. Okay. And, I, you know, I went to prison. I go, wow, this ain't, this ain't bad. You know, it's like, oh, you know, I was, I, it was nothing. It was, you know, like summer camp. Get up there, and that's when they had the weights and work out. And, you know, I met some good dudes from San Fernando Valley. And it was nothing, you know, just time flew. And when they told me two years, I'm like, two years, that's a long time. You know what I mean? But once you get in there and get that program, it's, it's nothing. You know, you meet some good dudes in there. And so then I, you know, I was like, Okay, so I, I just kept on selling dope every time I got out. You know, I've, I've had nine priors for sales. I've sold dope for three, 30 years of my life. You know, and, uh, <clears throat> and then, you know, I just did it back and forth, back and forth, getting two, three years, more, you know, more years. And then, uh, but I wouldn't, you know, I like using dope. You know, I wouldn't, I, I don't care, you know, I would, I would, I would use, and I'd always get violated for getting, you know, for dirties and stuff, but mm -hmm. I didn't care. You know, I like to tell them, well, if the worst I'm doing is getting high, but I'm really selling dope all the time, you know, because I'm using dope. And then finally, like in, uh, I think it was in, I got it in 99, and I finally got off parole. And my, yeah, one of my, I, I got out, and I finally, I got off, and I, start, I stopped smoking crack, and I started using speed. 
Mm. I never used speed in my life. You know, I, I sell, when I sell dope, I sell all dope. I sell crack, I sell powder, I sell speed, I sell weed, I sell pills, ecstasy, whatever I can get, I sell. I'm a one shop stop, you know. Mm -hmm. I, CBS. Yeah, you know, if, I, if you're going to get your money, I'm going to get your whole, you know, you, if your girlfriend likes this, I'm getting all your money. You come to me Friday night, I'm getting all your money. Yeah, so, and I found out that they don't give you more case, the more, you know, if you get sales, it's like if they if they bust you, so crack carries more time. So even though I had speed, powder, all this, they could only give me for one, you know, one of the, and they would always give it like crack cocaine that carries the most time. So they would uh, charge me for the crack. Okay. And that's what I would go do the time for, you know, mm -hmm. and the, vi you know, the priors and all that, you know. So, you know, I, so I quit, I got off parole and I started selling dope again, speed, you know, cause I don't use, I never really sold speed cause I didn't use speed. So mm -hmm. I didn't really want to sell and I didn't like speed because it made, you know, I used it when I was younger, you know, I did it a couple of times and it really made me grind my teeth a lot, you know, and I like, man, if I use this drug, I'm, I'm going to have no teeth. <laughs> so I didn't use it, you know what I mean? But, um. But then I started, you know, I, w I was smoking crack a lot, you know, and I'd always just make sure I had enough to buy more, and you know, and just have a good time. I always lived with like three or four of my homeboys. I always took care of everybody. They uh -huh. would help me deliver and stuff, but I would pay all the bills, buy everybody clothes, you know. I mean, back when the Jordash and member members only, we'd get oh, like <laughs> three pair yeah. for a quarter gram. Yeah. So everybody in the house is wearing, you know, nice clothes yeah. and everything. And, you know, I just always took care of all my friends, you know, you know, all, you know, because easy come, easy go. Yeah. That's the way I look at it. As long as I made money and I'm making more dope. And so I quit. I started selling speed and I, I started using it. And then I uh, kind of, you know, I, I'd smoke some crack, but I wouldn't get high on it. You know, I'd take a hit and I'm like, wow, I don't even feel it. So I, I kind of quit smoking crack and I would just use speed. And now I'm really coming up now, you know what I mean? I'm, I'm coming up, you know, like, you know, I'm fixing my cars up. Before I'd always talk about this is what I'm gonna do, that's what I'm gonna do, but man, I started just coming up because, you know, I'm selling crack still, you know, and I'm, but I'm not using it and I'm used to the speed and I, and I, I couldn't use as much speed as I had, you know, you know, always, you know, always had the connections, you know, all my connections want, I remember one of my connection. He front. He front me uh, five pounds, of speed. Mm. You know, I was, I, I, back then it was five thousand a pound. I was getting them. For what a, time frame was this? This is like ninety four. Okay. I mean, uh, two thousand four. Okay. Okay. You know, and okay, so uh, I'm phew, coming up. You know, I mean, big time. I mean, phew, coming up and selling speed, and uh, you know, I, I really started. Really, you know, I'm getting older. I'm thinking, oh man, I've been doing this 20 years. I'm, I'm smarter than the cops. You know, that's why I'm thinking. That's the way dope makes you think. And they can't get me. I got 30 years, you know, 20 years experience. That's what I'm thinking. But you know, there's always someone that wants to tell you on nowadays. Back in the days, they didn't tell on you mm -hmm. because they, they more stand-up people. They would, they would die. Mm -hmm. They were scared of that. Now, snitching, you know, they a lot of the dope dealers wanted to be their friends, so they don't snitch on them yeah. you know that's how it is today it's just all bad you know but selling speed i was coming up coming up coming up so i got they uh raided my house and uh you know i just went and picked up a quarter pound from my stash and i just pulled in and i pull up and then all these cops they, you know they were at my house waiting for me <coughs> i had four ounces under under my um stash under the hood i was always hide my dope under the hood mm. in a bag, you know, and the search car, go ahead, you know, I don't have nothing, you know what I mean? But, you know, they've missed four ounces in there. I had four ounces of Coke inside the house, but I had a dog, they had two dogs. So I guess my dog threw off all this, you know, the mm. smell and stuff, but they didn't find nothing. They, they, they searched and they found a marijuana plant and a speed pipe. That's it, so they didn't find none of the dope, huh? No, no, so they, you know, they took me to jail, $10,000 bail, you know, for, you know, so I bailed out and, um, you know, then I, you know, then I, I kept on selling, you know, like an idiot. I should have just stopped right there, but I kept on going. And then, so I, so I picked up another case. I go, wow, they got me, you know, I think the second case, they got me with a, a lot of dope, you know, but then I, and then I, I, I asked, 
well, how much is my bell? Oh, your bell is 30000 30, you know, and I, I bell right out. I didn't know you could bell out, you know, if you're on a case, but that's it's called a bell on crime or something. Mm -hmm. But anyway, I ended up belling out. I picked up five different cases at that time, going to court, fighting this, and uh, five cases, you mm -hmm. know, for selling, you know, just messing up. I'm so high, I'm just messing up. You know, that's how they're getting me. You know, people telling on me. So anyway, I got to turn myself in on July 6th of 04 for a six-year sentence. And I made it, you know, I made it, I turned myself in. I was a little late. I made it. And on the way, on the way to, um, to court, I'm thinking, why do I keep on going to jail? And because <clears throat> I use dope. That's why I sell dope, because I use dope. And I go, all right, I quit. You know, I, this is it. That day... I quit. Right now, I got 14 years clean and sober. I haven't used nothing. I don't drink. I don't smoke weed. I don't do nothing. Sobriety. That's the way I live now, you know. And then, you know, I, so I went and did so that I, I had four more cases. I turned myself in. I was fighting four more cases. They ended up giving me six on that one, eight, eight, and 16 months, and they dropped the case. So it was 23 years they gave me. But since I have all, you know, sales, no violence, no strikes, they are, uh, you know, all ran concurrent. So I did a uh, eight year, the, you know, I was doing an eight year sentence and they sent me to fire camp. And I'm a hard worker. Yeah, I love working, you know, I'm, a, I'm just a hard worker. You know, I've, I've worked in Alaska on a, on a fishing boat, you know, just because I heard it was good money and I always want to try it. And I went and did it one time. And I really liked it. On parole, I did it. Mm. My parole agent asked him, hey, I want to go. He goes, all right, well, let me know, and they call me back, and they go, oh, come on down. I go, okay, and they give me a 30-day pass. I was gone nine months. I was out in Seattle mm. after the boat got back, stayed out there selling dope in Seattle, <laughs> crack cocaine, till the next boat <clears throat> left, and, you know. But just wherever I went, you know, I sold whatever. So I did that. I went to fire camp. Man, they worked my butt off, you know what I mean? I loved it, though, fighting fires, man. My first fire was, like, uh, January was an uncontrolled, you know, out of control burn. The feds burned a fire as a fire five uh, acre burn. It turned it to be thirty three thousand acres. Mm. We, <clears throat> we got off the bus. It's like, man, we're, we had to run for our life twice on that fire. And I'm like, man, this is what it's like. I don't want to do this. <laughs> <laughs> Get burned guy, to death. And huh? the guy told me, hey, I've been on sixth season. I've never seen a fire like this. You know what I mean? But. You know, I, that year I got 1,800 hours in fires, and, you know, and, I, man, I loved it. It was beautiful. You know, we'd travel all over, getting a dollar an hour. You know, it's big money in prison. <laughs> I think I pulled with 1,800 bucks, and it was cool, you know. And then, uh, so I get out, and I don't use, I'm not, I, I think I got three years clean. I get out, and I'm not using, I'm not going to use. So I started uh, uh, I'm working for a, a, one of my buddies, construction company. I'm a foreman, making thousand dollars a week cash. I'm doing good. I just bought my Harley, and you know I, I needed to work, do some work on it. But uh, you know my boss, he he didn't party, and he started partying. We lost a big job. I'm six months. I'm doing good, and uh, we lose a big job, and uh, so I just went back to selling dope. You know, and uh, six months later, I got busted again. But that in that six months, you know, I, one of the girls brought some guy over. And, and what he, year was this? This is in uh, 08, okay. 07, okay. 08, right before, yeah. And I uh, hooked up with Swedish guy, you know, they were, I was, he was asking me, you know, one of these girls, these hooker girls brought this guy over, and he just got a j county jail. He was there for a year fighting a case. I guess he got busted with 20 keys and he beat it. And he came over to my house and he's buying a half ounce of speed for this chicken. And I got out the next time, speed was 1,800 an ounce. When I went in, it was 500 ounces. Now, you're making big money, bro. I'm getting them for like 800, selling them for $18,000 each ounce. Mm. You know, so I'm, then he's at, you know, he, you know, he's, he, he's acting weird. He, he writes something that he wouldn't even talk to me. But then a week later, the girl brings over, hey, this guy wants to talk to you. And he's like, he tells me what, he wouldn't even let, he tell, don't tell nobody what we're doing. He said, you know, he's sending keys to Sweden and he needs somebody to get his keys and, you know, keep, you know, and, you know, and he told me how to put him in, you know, put him in the TVs, wrap him up and everything and send him out, you know, and. You know, I was making money. I was, 
I think I, I spent like a hundred thousand dollars on my my vet, on my cars. I have a nice old Jag, you know, old vet, and my bike. I put twenty thousand in my Harley, and and I had fifty three thousand in the bank when I got busted mm. in six months. You know, I didn't get but you know I, I didn't get busted for doing the sending things. I got busted. Someone told on me, and they raided my house again. And I was like sixteen days to get off parole. I was pulling it. My project was so mad because I had the wool pull over her eyes. She was like, so anyway, they end up you know giving me ten years. You know, there was no deal, no nothing. You give me ten years. I'm like, well, you know. So I took the ten years, went in, did. So on that ten, I did four years because I went to fire camp again. <coughs> And then that 10 years, I started my term, my last term in Corcoran prison. They didn't find me, they sent me to fire camp. They said I had high blood pressure or whatever. So I'd like, oh, you know, but I kept on trying and trying. So I ended up in Corcoran, you know, on a lifer yard. And it was like 850 lifers, and there's like 100 people that aren't doing life. They're just regular, you know, inmates. And right then I just knew, I, you know, God, God kind of let me know, hey, you keep on selling dope. You're gonna do. You're gonna do life, you know. For what you know, you can do life for anything nowadays. You know what I mean? So being on that yard and 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 seeing that element, man, did was that a wake up call? It was. It was just I don't want to spend my life in prison. You know, it's I'm too good of a guy to be there. You know, there's a lot of good guys there. They can do that work, but I need to be out here doing some work. You know what I mean? It's like, you know, so I did that. I you know I did that four years on that ten, stayed clean. And when I, you know, once I went to prison that one time, I said, no more drugs. I was on the yard with all my homeboys. They, they had the dope every night, bringing, t and I would just turn it down. No, I'm not using, not using. And that's when they quit having cigarettes in the mm -hmm. prison. They quit. I had, I bought like 20 cans, stashed them. So I was like selling cigarettes now, like dope. Mm -hmm. You know, that was the t term before that. I think that was in, I forget what year, but. It was nice. It was like selling dope. I'm the man. I'm the man again. You know what I mean? But um, so anyway, you know, I did the four years, got out, and uh, just I just I didn't want to sell no more. And I knew if I I didn't know a, selling dope is an addiction. The lifestyle, the money, the the power, the being the man. It, it's an addiction, you know. And that's what I deal with harder than e not using dope. You know, that was easy. Once I said, I'm not gonna use them more, I have, haven't struggled one day. You know, I just, I quit. And I, and I didn't know that people struggle with that because I did. Once it was gone, it was gone. I think, <clears throat> I don't know, because maybe I used so much dope. You know, I remember one time my connection came over with four ounces of Coke. And he said, let's party. And like me and three of my homeboys, and we smoked four ounces of crack of that real cocaine, you know, free basin, you know, and and then after that was gone, like three days, he goes, I'll be right back, and he brought four more ounces. We smoked eight ounces of dope in like Damn. five days. And this one was the real, you know, I this got, was that shit Richard Pryor was smoking. That Richard Pryor lived right down the street from us. He lived oh, on shit. Parthenia. It oh, happened right oh, there on Parthenia. Oh, in, oh wow. In, in Northridge, I remember exactly when that happened. Was, he was cooking up with ether. Yeah, you know, so um, it just, you know, I, I didn't, but that's the thing I struggled mostly was the, the addiction to selling dope, being the man, you know, the women. You know, the, the last time I got busted the, the, in 04, when I turned myself in, I lived with nine women, mm. beautiful women, you know, nine women I lived with. And I was the man, you know, I'd tell them, you know, whatever. And that's it, you know, I met guys in jail, they's like, Man, you know that I sold to you. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Boy, I hated you. Every time I left your house, I'm like, I hated you. Like, oh wow, a lot haters, of undercover bro. haters. Huh? <laughs> you was getting yeah. it on the nine women, bro, busting cheeks up in there. Beautiful Shit. women, bro. And yeah. I, you know, I would get so, you know, I, using that speed, I would tell them, all right, go in the room, start. I'll be right there. I just stuck outside <laughs> working on the cars, and, you know what I mean? And, uh, oh, we did it without you. And like, oh well, you know what I mean? But you know, that's just part of the game, the yeah. lifestyle, and it. That's what I struggled with, yeah. man, not being that man. And But you know what? It's just, I, I don't want to, I know today that I got, I'm a Christian now. You know, I believe in God. God saved my life from doing life in prison, you know. Yeah. And I know there's something that God wants me to do. I haven't figured it out yet, but 
right now I'm just being a good man. You know, I, I, I have a handyman business. I, I, I survive. I pay my bills, you know, you know I, and I started another company. And today I just, you know, I, I volunteer a lot at church. I just volunteer. I, I feed the homeless every month with my sister. She does it. She's been doing it for the last seven, eight years, you know, the veterans now. You know, I just volunteer every chance I get. You know, I just like giving back. You know, I mean, it's just, you know, I, I was, I was, uh, I grew up as a boxer. I used to box for Vantage Police Station. I started uh, training kids in my neighborhood over there at the Young Champion Gym, but then it closed down. And, and it, it made me feel good because uh, they, used, they were calling me coach and stuff, and it just made me feel good. You mm -hmm. know, something just, you know, the, you know, now today I talk to cops and they don't look at me like I'm a piece of shit. They talk to me like, mm -hmm. like I'm a man, you know. And, before I, you know, I guess I can't blame him because I was a piece of shit. You know, I went to prison that last time and the late, the doctor and the, and the, and the you know, how you do the check and all that, you know, they check, she asked me, what are you here for? And I told her, cells. She goes, oh, ruining lives. I go, no, 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 I was a good dope dealer. And she goes, oh, but the more I thought of it, that's what I did, I ruined lives. That's all I did, you know, and, and I always, I had, I was one of the biggest dope dealers because I use dope and I've never cut dope in my life. And my job is to find the best dope I can find and sell it, you know, because everybody else, they're going to call me first. Hey, John Paul got the good shit, you know, and they'll call me and they'll call me and they'll call me. And if they can't, they're going to go somewhere else, but I'm the first person they go to, you know what I mean? Because I don't have my dope and your dope. I have <laughs> the dope, you know, I, I don't cut, I never cut dope in my life. I refuse to cut dope. You know, it's like selling liquor and you're cutting liquor, you know, you give them... Add water. Yeah. <clears throat> it's just something I never do. That's why, I, you know, I was the, the big guy, you know, and at the end I was the big guy. You know, I was, I'm lucky I didn't get busted for the Swedish thing because I'd probably still be in the federal prison. But, you know, today it's just all about live a good life, man. Do what I can, volunteer, you know, work out, you know, and like I started another company. Uh, the hanging towel, it's a, it's a towel that actually hangs on the gym equipment and said, I got tired of cleaning people's sweat oh, up. Oh man, that's the nastiest, man. I'm, I'm wasting 10, 15 minutes a day cleaning, so I, you know, I try to get a patent and all that, and, you know, I, and, but it's hard for me, because I'm not computer, you know, I'm computer illiterate, and it's hard for me to take it to the next step, but, uh, you know, I, I started a business, I, I'm a handyman, and I got, I'm an inventor, I've always been. And I got some great ideals in my book, but you can only do one thing at a time, you know, mm -hmm. and, it, and it costs money to get the <clears throat> patents and stuff, you know, but I know if I just keep on living a good life, being the best man I can and just helping and doing, you know, and doing things, I'm going to be blessed. I'm, you know, God's going to bless me. I believe that with all my heart, just as long as I don't sell dope and be a man, ruin lives. And so what advice would you give to somebody that's out there in the game? You know, there's a lot of... Um youngsters out there who are thinking this this is like you know all fun and games and you know these rappers and different people who glorify the drug game i mean what advice would you give to somebody out there that's like in, caught up in the mix i'll tell you the truth is uh when we were back in the game it was like not like now now they're giving life to youngsters i mean 18 years old you know life for attempted murder you know if or you know just something went wrong that they're, I see it, you know, I'm in court all the time. I see them people 18 years old that are doing life. They're never, you know, when I was on that life yard, I met people there for, there's things that you can't even imagine the stories I hear that why they're there, you know, that, man, like one guy killed a cop and he don't even remember it, you know, and like, I, I would just say that, you know, they're given too much time, you know, for, for nothing attempted murder before back when we were young you get seven years for murder you'd be out well even 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 uh now too just the cameras and people tell it's just a different area cameras the people telling tell. the telling the peep it's not worth it they, they they'd rather go give three go free you know and they have no problem doing that you know it's like you know it's just the telling it's not worth this it's you know i i thought i was i was nice to all my people because i used dope i know how it was if they want front you know i front anybody because 
you know, sometimes be a thousand, sometimes be twenty bucks, but it's worth that to see if they're, you know, you know, like one guy that was hanging around me back when I was doing the real cocaine, like he was there every day. I thought he was a good friend. I front him a twenty, you know, a, a a, gr a quarter gram, and he never came around again. Like, wow, for a twenty, you know, like so yeah. it was worth it. <clears throat> yeah, but there's just it, there's no future in it now. There's you know, it's, it's well, not, you know, one of the things I took from your conversation too is um, is the people you're around. See, a lot of people don't really pay attention to the the type of individual they associate with, and like you said. Those people aren't your real friends, man. No, no. I had thousands. I thought I had thousands of friends. They're but not you your know friends. what? When I go to prison, it was only my mom that would send me that package. You know, and I always had that package. I was be the first one on that quarter to get. I bet you. Oh, yeah. Was, I'll bet you my package gets here. And I'd always win the bet because my mom took care of me, my family. But we don't stop and think who we're hurting, your family, the That's people right. that love you. You're, right. We're hurting them, but we don't even care because we're so messed up, our mind on drugs. You know, when you use that speed, you don't think like you regular would, you know? You think, like, I, I, I have 25 years experience selling dope. I'm, I'm, you know, the cops can't bust me. They probably wouldn't if they wouldn't told on me, you know what yeah. I mean? <laughs> But it's not worth it. It's just, it isn't like it used to be. Prison itself Horrible. Isn't, isn't what it used to be. Back in, like I said, when I did my first term, it was, I was like, man, this is cool, man. You know, I have no problem coming and do a little time, you know, get buffed up and get out. You get all full up. And the, the one, like I said, I tell the girl, yeah, I just got out. Oh, I can tell, you know, <laughs> you know how it is. But you work out for a year on the <clears throat> weights on that, and now they don't even have weights in prison. No, and I think when you're young like that, you think that, you know, if you only got a little bit of time, you go in, go out, you got status. But when you get older and you start really putting it in perspective, it's like, man, is this really, this isn't worth it. This is not the type of crowd and people I want to be around. Yeah, because you know what? I used to be the youngster and I see the old guy and, you know, I was a youngster. Now I'm the OG. Hey, pops, you know, that's yeah. what they call me. I'm like, huh? You know? Yeah. I don't feel like it, but that's what I am now. And I, you know, and I try, I help, I meet good people in prison and I've helped a lot of good people get jobs, show them construction, get them going. You know, I got some good homeboys that did, you know, a lot of time and got out. I go, hey man, get a hold of me. I'll, I'm going to hook you up. And sure enough, get a hold of me. I get them, to, you know, and I got some good homeboys that have, you know, done that and keep going. And I go back and they're still, you know, but I know I will never sell dope again in my life just because I don't want to ruin lives and I, the more I think about it, I ruined lives you know I did man just having that good dope you know I ruined I used to meet people and they used to come over and they were like they were they were regular but then they kick it at my house for three four days and use dope and they would be like retarded I'm like damn what happened to this guy you know it, it's that you know that drugs that do that and just that kill you kill people man I have so many friends that are dead now and it's just, man, I just, man, I'm just happy I'm here. I'm healthy. I work out. I'm 58 years old. I feel good. You know, I, I know, like I said, great things are about to happen in my life just because I, I'm, I'm living a good life. You know, I'm, I'm doing the right thing. I'm not giving in. I'm not going to sell dope. I thought of it a few times when my connection come over. Hey, bro, you know, he just got out and I'm going to hook you up, honey. You know, like, I thought of it for a day and I just like, I can't do that, you yeah. know. I can't. I just told him, no, bro. If, well, let, let me know when you're ready. I had a couple connections. They came over. They they took care of my mom. They would come check my big connection. They would check on my mom, see how she's doing, and you know. And they came by and they just they. Oh, you're gonna go back? I'm like, no, bro. You know. And uh, I just want to live. I just live in a good life, the right life. It's it's not easy. It's not everything. It's not. You know, like it used to be before I had all the money, all the women, but, you know, I'm, I'm looking for, I'm not, I'm not really looking for a woman. I know I'll meet one, but I'm in no hurry. You know, I'm just working on me right now, mm -hmm. you know, staying out and being a good man. So you if know? you can um, have any uh, closing words, man, what would you um, like to say? And do you have any uh, information as far as your social media where people can try to find you? Well, I have the, the hangingtowel.com. It's a new workout towel for the gym and an after workout towel for your car, protected from the sweat. You know, it's a, you know, uh, 
and I'm a handyman, but I really don't push that. But, you know, I, like I said, I'm an inventor. I, I, I got great ideals. It just, I need just help. You know, I need mm -hmm. somebody to help me start selling these towels. I'm ready to give up 30% of that company just to get it going where I can get going on something else. If I can find someone to help me get it going and wants to put in the work, I'll give up 30% of that company and mm -hmm. get it going. It, I've done it all. I got a USA made, you know, I've, I got, you know, the patent thing ain't working out, but oh well, I can still sell the towel, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? But you know, Shark Tank, I try to get on there and it's like, cause I'm an ex-felon. Mm. Can't even have a misdemeanor there. Wow. But, oh well, that's their loss, you yeah. know what I mean? You keep it pushing, man, I mean, you're a hustler, man. You've yeah. been a hustler your I'm whole life. I'm a hustler, that's yeah. what I am, yeah. that's what I am. Yeah, I just, just say, you know, it's not worth it. Nothing is worth it today, not, not like, it. you know, they're giving, breaking you off for nothing nowadays. They're breaking. I met so many officers doing life. We'll never get out. We'll never be with women. We'll never have a family. We'll never live a great you know, life, you know, a real life. And this is life. You know, drugs is, it'll kill you. It, it, it just, it'll ruin your life. It's just, you gotta, you know, just gotta stay away from that, man. Whoo, man, hell of a story, you guys. There you have it, man. John Paul, man, uh, Big Herc, fresh out, life after the penitentiary. Lockdown's over. Get your yard time in. Exclusively at FreshOutSeries.com.